Trains in Factorio are fantastic for transporting large quantities of goods over long distances and allow you to multiplex lots of different loads onto the same line, making them really quite space efficient. With normal vanilla trains, you can set up quite complex systems and with LTN you can control them even more based on supply and demand, but putting down the rails is still a time consuming process. I'd say there are three main ways you can lay them. You can place them down manually as you travel, whether that's on foot, in a car, jetpack or a train. This works pretty well, you can drop them down as quickly as you want by just clicking madly, but as soon as you run into an obstacle, whether that's a tree, a cliff or a lake, you will come to an abrupt stop. The second way is to place a blueprint and then drive along it in the train, allowing the bots from your personal roboport to fly out and build the line as you go. This gets round the problem of trees and cliffs, the bots will automatically pick up the former and destroy the latter, and if you plan ahead you can get them to place landfill as well. The problem with this method is it's really slow and frustrating to creep along waiting for your bots to do their jobs. You'll also find your inventory fills up with stone and wood maybe faster than you free up space by using up the rails. With either of these methods you're also limited to what you can carry, although you can bring along extra supplies in a train if you want. That's not too bad though, you can carry literally thousands of pieces of rail, so you'll be able to go a long way if you prep your inventory specifically for it. The third way, which I don't generally use myself, but I'll get abuse from my brother if I don't include it, is to lay down a repeating blueprint with rail, power and roboports in it. This is even slower than using your personal roboport, as the bot with the next roboport won't leave until the previous one has been placed, and as your train network expands, the bots will take longer and longer to get to the end of it. That said, during this time you can go off and do something more important while you wait for your minions to build your plans, and you'll end up with power at the other end of the route once it's done, plus signals all along the track. As you can probably tell, I'm not fully satisfied with any of these methods, so today we'll be taking a look at a mod which fixes this for us. Welcome to Lawrence Place Factorio, where we're going to take a look at FAL, the fully automated rail layer. At its simplest, FAL is a special locomotive that builds track as it runs, so you can get into it, press start and set off into the unknown with rail being laid as you go. If you steer while the train is moving, FAL will build corners into the rail as well, however this is tricky to do at speed, I recommend slowing down for corners. FAL doesn't create the rail out of nothing, the rail will be taken from any attached wagons and any wood or rocks which get in the way will get pulled up and dumped into the wagons as well. Additionally, if you add cliff explosives and landfill to the supplies in the wagons, you can cross over everything except biters without even slowing down. So you can cruise out with your file train, lay some track, park it in a properly designed station and have all the waste products dumped out into your factory for processing into more rail. That's the most basic use of file, placing track as you drive, but if you look at the file interface you'll see options for placing signals, poles and concrete. These will be ticked by default but didn't have any effect before because I didn't have those parts available in my wagons. If you add pylons and signals to the supplies in the wagon, you can have it place those as well. By default, the signals will be placed 15 tiles apart, but you can adjust that if you want. Having regular signals like this ensures that multiple trains will be able to use the route you're laying without having to spend too much time waiting for each other. The next trick is to place out the ghosts for your rail route in advance, typically on the map view. Roll your file train up to the start of this route and press start as normal. File will ask if you want to start in autopilot mode and also if you want to get kicked out of the train. When you click yes, the train will zip off and lay the track you set, including pylons and signals as normal. Of course you can't place ghosts over water, but other than that this works nicely. For completeness, I should also mention the bulldozer mode which will lay down track and pull it up with another file locomotive at the back, which I suspect is intended to allow you to pull up existing rail, but in effect turns the train into a sort of weird unstoppable car. And there we go. That's the simple side of file, just running around, laying rail wherever you need to go. And to be honest, before I started making this tutorial, that's about as far as I got with it. The next step though is even more powerful. This is where you can make blueprints of what you want your rails to look like, allowing you to place far more than just a basic rail down. The file blueprint rules are relatively straightforward, but very easy to get wrong, so I'll run through them step by step. First, place down a piece of track that your train will run along. Make this horizontal or vertical, but it doesn't matter, but don't go diagonal yet. 
Now add a chain signal on that piece of track. The chain signal tells file that this is the active track, the one that the file train is going to travel along. Next, add any extra rails you want. To start with, let's just put one track going in the opposite direction so the trains can return. When you place any additional track, you must place a normal rail signal on it to tell file both that this is an additional track and also which way trains should travel along those rails. If you want to have more than two lines, just add them in wherever you want with signals to set their direction. Now add a pylon. You can use either medium or large pylons. This will control how often the pattern repeats as the pylons will be placed at the right distance apart to just connect. You don't need to run the rail in the blueprint for this distance. A single piece is enough. So that's the basics. Press Ctrl C to copy, select what you've just built, open the file settings and drop that on Blueprints Read. If you now try to use the file train, it will give an error because the blueprint for straight and diagonal buildings have different numbers of tracks. So build the same layout on a diagonal and then copy it and drop it into the Blueprints Read again. Now you should be able to start the file train again and trundle along as before but this time you'll be laying two parallel tracks running in opposite directions. As before, you'll need to have all the bits for this in your wagons, or it will quickly stop or miss out bits for your design. Also note that if you click on Connect Logic Wires in the File menu, you'll get red, green or both cables strung along your pylons as well. So this is great, but what if you're running through contested territory? Wouldn't it be nice to build some defences as well? Let's tweak our design a little. Once again, make sure there's a chain signal on your rail, and then add in a laser turret on each side, plus a wall. And we'll move these pylons outside the rails as well, so that the turrets have power. Now I can copy that again, and drop it into the blueprint reader. I should do one for diagonal as well. It's not vital this time since I've not changed the number of rails, but it will allow me to build in all directions. Now that's done, let's start moving again. You can see that it's now placing the large pylons their maximum distance apart and putting down one laser with each pylon. This does give full coverage as you can see from the map view, but it won't stop a concerted biter attack. We can build the same blueprint again with medium pylons like this, which will give us more closely spaced laser turrets. Don't forget to also make a diagonal blueprint with medium pylons, or it won't work. It will still try to use the large pylons. Drop the blueprints into the read button again. Alternatively, we can put in multiple turrets per pylon, in which case file will place them all each time it places down a new pylon. Make sure you don't make a blueprint wider than a single pylon. This seems to break as file tries to overlap the blueprints and, um, and that makes it sad. The final thing to note is that when you turn using a larger blueprint like this, file isn't quite sure how to put the corners together. It will transition the railways neatly from one blueprint to the other, but you'll have to tidy up the walls and anything else you put in there yourself. I've also noticed that sometimes the placement doesn't start again properly after a corner. If this ever happens to you, just double click the stop start button to reset it and that'll fix it. Congratulations, you're now using file in complex mode. You can add other stuff to these blueprints if you want, for example to lay down huge areas of solar panels like this. Or you can add in concrete flooring by holding down shift when you copy and selecting tiles. Just make sure you've always got all the bits you need in your wagons. Now you know how to use file, let's have a quick run through the options. These should make a lot more sense after the earlier parts of the video. Place signals allows you to set whether file will put down regular signals along the rails it's laying. Place poles is the same for the power poles. These will both always be placed at the appropriate intervals if turned on. Place Concrete configures, you guessed it, where the concrete will be placed. This assumes there's concrete in the blueprint you're using. If the blueprint doesn't have concrete, this won't magically cause it to be placed. Bulldozer makes the file train pick up the track behind itself. Note that this requires a second file locomotive at the back of the train. Maintenance mode causes the train to pick up everything in front of it and rebuild it. This allows you to replace an existing layout with a new one. If you do use this, be very careful with corners. Bridge water places down landfill as required when you try to cross water. Very useful. 
The stone and wood options allow you to configure whether the resources you remove to make way for the train are simply destroyed or placed in the wagons. Everyone likes free resources, but you can also have it just dump them on the ground when it fills up if you want. I think maximum cruise speed makes the train go at full speed rather than just at a sensible speed when in cruise mode. Distance between signals allows you to adjust how far apart the signals are placed. You might want them a bit closer together if you expect this line to be high throughput, especially if you use short trains. Alternatively, you might want them further apart on longer spurs to save on signals. Rail type is for the more heavily modded games. You might want to select Space Rail, or Maglev, or Narrow Gauge, or, or who knows what. I'm not sure how place pole entities differ from place poles. If you know, please tell me in the comments. Remove cliffs and place walls do exactly what you'd expect. Place ghosts tells the train to leave ghosts of any entities it wants to build but has run out of. This way maybe your construction bots can replace them later. Mirror concrete is another one I'm not sure about. Sorry. Connect logic wires allows you to run red and green cables along the pylons. And the stored layout allows you to save some of your blueprints. The mod tells you how many lanes and what sort of pylons you're using, but it doesn't give you any other hints as to what the blueprints are. You might find it easier to just save the blueprints and reprogram it each time, but if you are capable of remembering three things, this could be useful for you. I know I'd just forget which was which. Read blueprints I've talked about. That's how you get the layout into file, but pressing clear will return it to default mode, a single track with large pylons and lights. Create blueprints is actually quite useful if you need a reminder of how the blueprint should be set up. If you grab a blank blueprint and click on one of these buttons, you'll be given an example of a two-track setup that you can then fiddle about with, or just immediately program the file with. Finally, the statistics button tells you some mildly interesting information about how the train has been doing, with important information such as how many trees you've destroyed. I hope this video has been useful. File is a very powerful tool, but I know I've personally never really used it to its full potential. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, there's lots of Factorio content going on here, and if you have any other subjects you think I should make a tutorial for, please let me know. I'm keen to start making a lot more of them, and I don't want to run out of ideas. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.